All right, so we will have three sessions this week and three more sessions next week. And basically the idea is to learn first how to use Drupal 8, then how to create uh, RESTful services in Drupal 8, and learn some workflows of usage of Drupal 8, what are, how Drupal 8 is different from Drupal 7, so all that. And then later on move on into React.js, which is the hot new um, framework in JavaScript development. Okay, so then we combine the React.js's uh, UI front-end with Drupal 8's RESTful back-end and uh, create some interesting applications that way. So Drupal 8 will serve some RESTful services and content and whatnot. And then React.js will provide a front-end and, and use Ajax to uh, interact with Drupal 8's RESTful service. Okay? we will do that so first thing today though all we are going to do is learn how to install Drupal 8 the right way it is the wrong way which is similar to Drupal 7 way that's how everybody starts I also started that way but then there is a right way which we will learn so let's start with with the wrong way so as you if you have been using Drupal 7 then your first instinct is to, if you want to start a Drupal 8 project, you'll say rush download Drupal 8, right? So this is how most people do it. That's fine. Let's do it this way because we will then learn from it. So I, if you do not know this, do let me know. So that downloaded rush, DL Drupal 8 downloaded this Drupal 8.3.5. Uh, and now uh, we are going to create a dedicated host name for this. So if I if I open a new window and I say I want to create a dedicated host, let's say foo.demo.v8. So this I used earlier, so it's showing up here. So I want to alias this to my local host. Okay, this will point to my local host. So I do that, of course. There is no DS, DNS name dot foo dot demo dot dh, so therefore it doesn't resolve to anything, right? So it, to resolve it correctly, first thing we have to do is step number one: sudo vi etc hosts. Again, I'm in this particular session. I am um, using a Linux laptop. You may or may not be using a Linux laptop. You could be using Windows or Mac. But you can certainly do the same thing with a Linux virtual machines machine. So that should be doable. In any case, let's go to our etc hosts file. And now I'm sorry, I cannot teach you basics of sudo, etc. I'm assuming you know that. But let's just say create an alias to 127.0.0.1, which is our loopback address and give it the name foo.demo.v8 okay save that as soon as you save it and now you reload you will get a different error See? you're getting this error it says file not found it basically is looking for it somewhere but it's not able to find it in any case i have not configured my web server to serve any kind of website at this host name so that will be the next step so in order to do that, I'm going to op create, um, I'm going to basically cd to etc nginx sites uh, enabled. And I have a few symbolic links and so I have sites enabled which has symbolic links pointing to sites available. Again, if you do not know how, what all this means, then that means you need to learn to configure a web server. I'm not going to go very deep into it. So let us assume that you know a little bit. So I'm in sites. I go to sites. Uh, so I, I, I open a new file in sites available. Let's call it demo. I create this is nginx server. So I create a server block. Server block will have a server name. It'll have a listen. 
So we say listen on port 80. We'll have a server name block which which will be foo.demo.d8. dot d eight. So first thing we did was in etc hosts we created DNS name. Now here we are so now it at this point it's already correct correctly pointing to our local host and nginx is even fielding those requests the only thing is nginx doesn't know where to take that request so that is what we are creating in this server block we are saying listen on port 80 and when the server name is foo.demo.d8 then it matches this server block at that point take them to root directory home jitesh demo and now i will create a subdirectory under that called foo and that's where my Drupal application root will reside. Then there is one more thing left at this point. Okay, let's save this. Hmm. Oh, looks like I did not sudo it. Uh, my bad. So let me put this and sudo it properly. Server, let me do it quickly. Listen on port 80. Server name, host name is foo.demo. And my root, the doc root is home, jitesh, demo, foo. Okay. This is, up to this point, all I have, I don't have a Drupal site configured now. All I have is a site configured. So, let's uh, save this. Let's, let me just quit it. And then, I create a symbolic link. Sudo ln minus s from sites available foo or oh sorry demo to the current directory having a demo which means we now have a demo symbolic link pointing to parents child i mean a sibling directory called sites available slash demo okay then we say tell a service pseudo service nginx reload so this will tell the web server to reload these configuration files. At this point, I reload and I get a nicer file not found, 404 not found still. Why? Because foo directory does not actually exist. So let me just go back to uh, my demo directory. There is no foo in here. There is only Drupal 835. So let me just rename Drupal 835 to foo. Okay. Let's reload now. So I reload, and now the message changed to 403 forbidden. Why? Because foo directory has all kinds of. Uh, now the, the foo directory is found, the doc root is found, but it has all kinds of things, but none of them is index.html. There is an index.php, yes, but that uh, Nginx so far does not know that it is supposed to serve index.php. Besides, it also doesn't know how PHP works at this point. So, and I will, I'm going to start, fix that in a second. Just to show that this works, I can type readme.txt here, and I get the Drupal readme txt, which means it is correctly pointing to this place, right? Okay, so now there is only one thing left, which is uh, I have to go to sudo vi sites uh, available demo. And in there, I have to add configuration file that will make this Nginx virtual server understand how PHP works and how Drupal works. Solution is, I have a pre-written include file under apps Drupal. Let me just explain where that, what that is. There is a file ca called, sorry, not app, but apps. Okay, let me just explain that. In etc nginx, there is a directory called apps, and in there, there is a file called Drupal. This file has a whole bunch of configuration for nginx, which configures Drupal-related stuff, and it, it configures PHP-related stuff. So, for example, it, it understands that whenever something, like, for example, here. Um, yeah, so here it has... Whenever you try to reach the root or any, any child thereof, try, try the file itself, then try index.php followed by query string, 
and uh, then whenever you know so so there is um, there is some configuration this I basically got from internet so this is not a part of this session we cannot explain how this works but you can get this f uh, off of internet if you just search for um, nginx Drupal 8 configuration or Drupal 7 configuration so I'm just including that as soon as I include that save and quit and then reload so which means sudo service nginx reload so when you reload now watch what happens you just go to the base directory look it tried to first go to index.php but then index.php realized that this there is no drupal site configured in this place so it redirected you to core slash install.php and now you go through the Drupal installation process okay so let me pause for a second okay so now that uh, nginx is running installation process of Drupal let's save and continue at this point it says which profile you want to install minimal or standard will say standard and at this point it complains it says hey in your doc root I tried to create a directory called sites default files so if you now go to foo there is Drupal from there you go to sites default and there is only template files default services YAML and default settings PHP there is no files directory and when this guy tried to create files directory it failed why because because this is this is not the browser running this is the web server that is complaining so nginx is trying to create a files directory and it's failing if you look at nginx process you will notice that the nginx process runs as the the first one runs as the root but everybody else all others run as the www data and www dash data is a underprivileged um, user so and a group so what we should do is we, we it, it is that particular user is not able to create files here so we created for it okay so there is files the problem with that is now that it got created nginx will still not be able to create files under files so we to give it that capability we say okay fine change the group to www data for files now while whereas earlier it was jitesh and jitesh now it is jitesh and group is www data so now nginx will be able to, to create files under files there is one last thing left which is i should do cha chain mode group g plus s on files what does that mean that means that whenever any whenever any file is created under this directory its group will be sticky which means www data will be inherited by every file that is created under files okay so this way even if i personally as jitesh was creating a file under files it would still have this group which means it will um, be deletable and readable by nginx now that we have done this we can say alright now proceed at this point the files problem is totally solved now there is a second problem which is that it is not able to create settings.php again the same issue so what we will do is we will create a basic settings.php so copy default.settings.php to settings.php and then one more thing again nginx will not be able to write to it so we change the group to settings.php okay now as you can see group has the right permission to the settings.php therefore this will work let's proceed and it proceeded it now wants a database name a username and a password so let's as Jitesh, let me create a, um, a new database. Create database uh, demo Jitesh D8 foo. And 
And once I do that, I can use this database name. Oops. Let me do it again. Yep, so that's my database name. Username is Jitesh. And the password I automatically generate. So I put it in my my.cnf tilde slash dot my.cnf and this is my password and I save and continue so I created a new database and gave it the username and password the mysql username and password and now it proceeds so up to this point you might notice that this is very similar to Drupal 7 in fact there is hardly any difference at all okay and this this approach still works, yes, but this is not the right approach and I will show you in a second why it's not. But before we do that, let's just let's just start with what is familiar to us, uh, which means we use the D, uh, D7 approach for now. Okay, right. so let's allow this to finish. Right now it is going to install 40 modules. Um, as you know, in Drupal, installing and downloading a module are two different things when you download the module it's just sitting on your file system it's not installed yet installation means you check the checkbox in front of that um, modules name in Drupal configuration administration and then you say okay now install this or enable it when you enable a module for the very first time it goes through an installation process and that means it creates some files or it may create some tables, it may create some configuration. Whatever it needs to create in order to function properly, that is what it does. So that's the installation process. And uh, there is one very important thing. In Drupal 7, you were able to disable module after they have been enabled. In Drupal 8, there is no such thing as disabling a module. There's only one option, uninstalling the module. That's it no way to disable modules anymore in Drupal 8. You can only uninstall them, which you might imagine is a very uh, risky thing, I guess, because you will lose all configuration, all data, all content, all tables, everything that the installation process created. So that is the way it is in Drupal 8, and nobody knows exactly why that was such a great idea. But hey, So let's see, let's finish installing this. Uh, foo d8 foo site and its email address. Let's just use my email address. Admin user. Give a password. Right. So so far nothing new to you, but trust me, good stuff is coming. So finished. So this is our site. It says all necessary changes to sites default and sites default settings PHP have been made, you should remove write permission to them now in order to avoid security risks. So what they are saying is, you should go here and say chmod remove the all write permissions okay, to settings.php and remove the, I guess you could also make uh, remove all the write permission to the current directory as well. So now you have nothing. Uh, so the current directory cannot be written. No more files can be created here. And then settings.php becomes read only as well. The only thing where files will be created is the file directory. Okay. So let's, uh, at this point, let's go to extend. And in extend, you will see what is what Drupal modules come with core, okay? So we'll go, go in there, but let me now talk about what um, what are the new features in Drupal 8. Why should we do Drupal 8? And the reasons are right here. I just rewrote pre -wrote them. So basically Drupal 8, everything is an entity. So what I mean is not only nodes, are entities, but so are blocks. Blocks are entities. So if you go to block layout, and uh, you can take any block, the custom block library, you can create new block types. 
you know add a custom block and then you can add custom fields to blocks this is something that Drupal 7 didn't have so everything is in an entity files are entities out of the box user of course in Drupal 7 users taxonomy terms and um, nodes for entities but now in Drupal 8 almost everything that you can think of even configuration items are entities so that's one thing it is object oriented programming in Drupal 8 so Drupal 8 is mostly object oriented there is some procedural code still left but for the most part Drupal 8 is object oriented then Drupal 8 is mobile first meaning say every all even the admin uh, themes all the themes are basically uh, mobile ready so if, you, if I make my browser smaller let's say you see how it, it changed the layout because it's it's uh, adjusting itself to a smaller screen size if I keep going then you see this became uh, a mobile menu the hamburger menu as they call it so, so this this is uh, the built-in Bartek theme which is now responsive theme so it's fully responsive mobile first also means that it has uh, other uh, enhancements which are friendly to mobile clients we'll, we won't be discussing them just yet so rest in core which means it has restful services available uh, directly in core if you see here if you look for rest you see restful web services are in core so we can enable that we'll do that later now it has what WYSIWYG in out of the box so if you remember in Drupal 7 there was no WYSIWYG out of the box you had to actually install it as a contrib module what is WYSIWYG? it means you know configuration or basically if you go to content authoring text formats and editors you have basic HTML restricted HTML these formats but then they, they also have CK editor built in so now when you say content add content article you don't have to first enable ck editor or tiny mce you get ck editor right out of, out of the box so that's that's what i mean by with the big out of the box okay so that's there then it has views in core so the fantastic views module is now in core you can see that in extends right there and it's actually enabled it seems so then migration is in core if you will see although it's a, an experimental feature at this point but it is in core migration migrate module is in core okay so and and that means migration now they have also had a very aggressive push to make it very easy to migrate from one version of Drupal to another version so that upgrades are easy and we will discuss that later then the most important thing I, in my opinion is configuration management initiative configuration in Drupal 8 is so beautifully streamlined mm, once you see it you will like it too uh, in Drupal 7 we used to do configuration management mostly using features which worked to some extent but it had some serious problems but in Drupal 8 it is so easy so easy to do configuration management we will see that in later in this session so we'll come back all right so um we can keep doing more the, the, let me look, now show you the again this is the old way of doing doing drupal but there are some changes in uh, the structure so it is not advisable you can create modules directory right here and there used to be sites all if you remember in Drupal 7 there was a sites all no longer it's not there anymore also <coughs> when you want to uh, download uh, contrib modules to sites all instead you download to modules just put them in modules contrib and you can put modules slash contrib slash whatever module directory and then similarly profile slash contrib slash some new profile or themes would you would put in theme slash contrib slash 
whatever. So that's so let me just create modules contrib and let me create themes contrib. So if I like for example right now I don't like the fact that this is not stick uh, flying out the menus are not flying out on their own. So I'm going to just say rush bl admin toolbar. That's the new uh, module that helps you make the admin uh, menu fly out. So I download admin toolbar. It okay. I download it to uh, yeah doc root slash modules contrib okay so in there it has admin toolbar and admin toolbar tools so if i say rush en admin underscore toolbar yes so once i do that i refresh this page and now hovering on this actually expands the menu and makes a fly out. This is much easier, right? So this is how uh, Drupal 7 used to be done and this is how Drupal 8 we are doing right now. But this is not the recommended approach because of configuration management. And let's come to that. There are two things that are added to the mix. One is CMI, the other is Composer. These two things have changed your Drupal work and development workflow. Let me show you what I mean. So. Let's look at the configuration uh, CMI first. If I go to configuration, development, configuration synchronization. So this is a new area. So what it will do is if I make any changes or if I don't even make any changes, if I just export the configuration, it gets exported in terms of uh, as YAML files. In Drupal 8, all configuration is exported to YAML files and imported from YAML files. What are YAML files? Yet another markup language. We'll see them in a second. So let's hit export and just say export. So watch what happens. It simply downloaded the uh, gzip file. So if I look at this gzip file, it's config foo demo. Config foo demo tar.gzip. So if you notice, it has some it has a date stamp on it. And these are YAML files, so many YAML files, right? So this is how um, uh, it exports. Yeah, if I open any of these YAML files, so it has uh, a key and a value, then another key with a sub key, because it is indented by two spaces. Whenever you have two spaces, it means a sub level within and nested level. So we can go through these, but that's not interesting. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was you can export the configuration by simply saying crush CEX and then configuration export, right? And when we do that, it will put that in sites default files, config underscore some random looking number. This is a hash, random hash, slash sync. Why is this? number so impossible to remember or impossible to even type or anything like that because it is intentionally so because it they don't want anybody to guess this number this string the, this directory sits in public files so if somebody was able to guess this number they can steal your configuration and uh, you definitely don't want that so that's why it is going to export this configuration to this impossible sounding directory name and you say yes. Once you do that, this directory ls minus l of this directory will show you the same files that I had in my gzip file. Okay, so these are all the YAML files. If I pick any of these YAML files, if I say, let me get the system system sync system site dot yaml so this is one of the important uh, yaml files system dot site dot yaml and it has a this is the site's uuid it has this is the site configuration remember we call it d8 foo the site email is com no slogan front page is 
So as you can imagine, I mean, you could probably recognize that this is same as what you would have in system site, basic site settings. And these settings are stored in here. They're not really stored, they're exported here. Okay. And as you can see, default config hash, this is the config hash. So this is that long number. Now, so this, uh, what we can do is, let's say I wanted to, wanted to change the name of my site from d8foo to something else. Let's just, I could simply edit this file, uh, d8foo, and then make it d8foo modified. Okay. So I just change that one line, right and quit. Now I can say rush. I had earlier set CEX config export. Now I can say CIM config import. So if I say that, yes, go ahead and import the configuration. It notices the fact that only system.site got modified. So it says, do you want to import those changes? You say yes. And as soon as you say yes, and now if I refresh this page, this d 8 has is now d 8 modified. If you go to the front page of the site, it is now named d 8 modified. So this is a very small trivial change I, I wanted to show you. So this is what configuration management initiative has done. So all configuration is exportable like this. Now, I mean, all content types, everything is, is in this form. So if you see configuration, development, configuration synchronization. So earlier we did a full full archive export. Uh, you could do single item export and there you first pick the type of configuration. So simple configuration you could say system.site for example, I remember. We but yeah this one. Simple configuration means just a bunch of variable settings. That's what this is. Uh, so they have first level category and a second level uh, name. Um, then you have say uh, blocks. If you wanted to export a block, it will show you all the blocks. So if you see help help block, this is the body of each block, um, apps and so on and so forth. So if you had views, for example, if you wanted to export a view, you just go to configuration type view, and then it will list every view in the system. And if you want to say front page view, right? So if I want my front page right now, look, this is my front page. Welcome to D8Foo modified. No front page has been created. So this is a very longish. Obviously, as you can imagine, this is the full definition of the view. If you wanted to just uh, mess with something, so let's say instead of no front page um, has been created yet, you want to let's copy this whole thing and we can import it Cop I copied this, I go to import and I say I want to import a single item of type view and here, here I paste it but when I paste it I'll just change something like um, instead of no front page has been created then you know, say I'll write some nodes I just change, change this message. If I say import, it is it's saying that you are overwriting something. Do you want to do this? Yes, I want to do this. I imported that. Uh oh. What did it say? An error occurred while processing with arguments. I'm not sure if it really failed. Let's just refresh. Write some notes, please. Right there. So yeah, it worked. I don't know what the, this error is for, but, but it worked anyways. So this is, so can, can you see how simple it has become to export and import configuration and everything is configuration. All content types are configuration. All, uh, everything that you see in here, content authoring, text formats, etc., is configuration. So that's very useful. Yeah, like if you add, um, you know, basically in one content types, uh, if you see, this article and basic page. If you were to add new fields to it, it would be exported as uh, YAML. So we'll we'll come to that. 
So this is one thing that uh, even easier than this I showed you right Drush CIM and CEX is even simpler. Uh, so you can actually export entire configurations uh, of your site into YAML files or inner directory and we'll come to that. Now the other thing that, that drives uh, our workflow is going to be Composer. Now Composer is a if you have used other package management systems in Java they have Maven in Node they have NPM and uh, now in PHP the, everybody is using Composer. So Composer is a dependency management system so if you uh, in any PH, any mature PHP project there will be a Composer.json file and it basically de defines so don't be don't be thrown off by the word JSON in there. It's just a config file. It could have been XML, could have been anything. And it uh, defines its dependencies. Uh, well, in this case, there are no dependencies specified. But it uh, defines the configuration. So here it says my repository is the composer repository for, for me is packages.drupal.org slash 8. So which means uh, you can tell Composer to download a new package and it will pack download from this place. The fun part is that it will also upload update this composer.json and therefore you can commit you can commit the composer.json to git without committing the package that you just downloaded because as long as you record the fact that I need this package, the package can be re-downloaded in the future. So that's what we are going to see. So these two things, uh, fully exportable configuration due to CMI and this composer based dependency management, these two things have changed the workflow. And let's now see how we would, how the workflow should be changed, can be changed. Okay, so let's put this. At this point, I'm going to leave this site alone and I'm going to move on to a different site. I'll call it bar. So I go back. So I already have foo site. I'm going to create a bar site. But this time, instead of doing trash DL Drupal 8 again and then renaming it to bar, I'm going to take a different tag altogether. Okay, so this time I have in my history I have this composer command. So this is what what will drive the workflow. Uh, we, we will create a, we will run composer command. I already have composer installed on my machine. You will need that. And then run the create project command of composer. What it does is it basically downloads a, a composer package from a certain, so this is the name uh, of the organization that published it and this is the name of the project itself. And here's the version number. Now it is tilde 8.0 which basically means that I don't want this number to change. So 8 has to remain 8 but you can make this 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.9, 8.22, 8 whatever. Doesn't matter. So this number can change but the first number should not change. Okay. And then stability dev means I would like stable but dev versions are also okay. And then no interaction simply means don't show me don't ask me too many questions, just do it. Um, and now, here's the name of the directory in which it will clone this project. So it will, it will, it will create a copy of this Drupal project from Drupal Composer repository, um, eight, version 8 of it, into this directory called bar. Okay. So now, I'll, I would, you know, if you are watching a video of this, you should, you can just type this. Mm, by looking at it, okay. I'll also try to include this in the video description. Let's start. So, this this will take a few seconds, maybe a minute or two. I don't know. But what it is going to do is, it's going to go to one all of its recognized repository package repositories for Composer. To look for a publisher named Drupal Composer, and under that publisher, it will look for a project named Drupal Project find version 8 or 8.1 or 8.2 or 8.3 or whatever it can find and then download that into the bar directory so it's downloading everything 
So this is going faster than it normally would because I've already done this a few times. So most of these files are cached. So what it is doing again, let's, let's allow it to finish. But it's basically downloading one project and then downloading all of its dependencies and those dependencies have dependencies. So like that, there is a chain reaction of downloads. So fine, and then finally it has a, a post install script. And in that script it is doing some certain things which I don't actually agree with. I'll fix these in a second. So, so this was the command again. Composer, create project, get it from this publisher, get this project, get this version or better, put it in this directory, get me dev stability or better, and don't ask me too many questions. Okay? All right. So now let's see what happened. When we did that, we got a new directory called bar. But bar is not same as foo. Let's cd to bar. And you will notice immediately that there is no index.php here. There is a composer.json, there is composer.lock, there is a trash directory, script directory, vendor directory, and web directory. Uh, please note that vendor directory is where composer downloads all the dependencies. So if you look at uh, foo, it has vendor, yes, but it's at the same level as index.php. And composer.json is on also at the same level. While in this directory where we are, the index.php is actually inside web. So this is where Drupal resides under web. So web contains autoload.php, it contains index.php, and, and all the sites. And everything that you recognize as Drupal is here, not one level higher. And one level higher is composer dependencies, composer JSON, and other things like that. So, why? Why? Why is this a better situation? I'll explain in a very in a second. But right now, just suffice it to say that Drupal is now not in bar. Drupal is in bar slash web. Okay. So now let's see. If I wanted to create a sec second site, let's call. I want to call it bar dot demo.d8 right? this is where I this is the second site I press enter obviously it doesn't work because there is no such DNS name called bar.demo.d8 so to fix that I say okay fine let's open HTTP hosts as a root and I will simply make another alias called bar.demo save and quit. At this point, bar.demo.d8 starts working, but it points to welcome to nginx. So it doesn't take us, take me to this directory where I want to be. In fact, I don't want to be and go there. I want to go to web directory, which is where my index.php is. So in order for that to work, I have to tell nginx where to where the duck root is. So sites in the same directory, I will just duplicate this block, server block, right? and then instead of foo.demo.d8, I say bar.demo.d8. And the root is not demo slash bar, it is demo slash bar slash web. So this is something we have to remember. Because we are putting our Drupal in one level deeper. Okay? So save and quit. And then re uh, ask nginx to reload configuration. So as soon as I do that and I refresh it, it starts the Drupal installation process. Excellent, right? One, but before I go very far, I want to fix the things that the installation script, uh, the composer installed uh, create project did. I don't like the fact that the whole world can write to this and it is still owned by Jitesh and same thing with settings PSP. I, I don't want to do it like that. So I'll say, chmod remove the write permission from others no write for others on files as well as settings.php so that means now others cannot write to files and they cannot write to settings.php but change the group to www data for both files and settings.php so 
so now because the group is changed and group can write to them uh, it all looks good well, one more thing is chmod g plus s so that the group becomes sticky for files directory so that you know www data will always be the group for all files that are created under this directory we do those things and now we proceed All right, so it says an automated attempt to create the config sync dot dot slash config slash sync field. Now this is very good. Let me tell you where this is coming from. This is coming from if you look at settings.php and go to the very end. That's where it's coming from. If you look at the settings.php of the other uh, Drupal site we created, demo slash foo slash sites default settings.php. The config directories is a setting under which there is a key called sync and that as you can see the path to the conf the sync version of config directory is, is this path sites default files blah blah blah. Now in this the configuration is different. We are saying that configure the sync the configuration lives dot dot slash config, which means dot dot as in and the dot dot related to, to the doc root. Doc root is the web directory, and which means there is dot dot config sync. Of course, it doesn't exist, so we have to make it exist. So to create or well, create along with parents mkdl minus p dot dot slash config slash sync. Now, why is this good? This is great because now configuration sits outside of doc root, which means there is no fear of anybody stealing your configuration. And now you can you can version control your configuration. You can commit configuration to config sync. We'll com come to that in a second. But let's, pro let's see. it tried to create and we have now created it for it. We don't even have to give it the right permission. So let's not worry about that. Let's proceed. We are in a good place. Let's create the database. Username, fish, password, I don't remember. Let's find out. That's the password. And the installation process has started. So now, uh, let's take another look at the structure. So this is something you need to understand. The base of your project is this bar directory. And in that, there is a web directory, which is where index.php and the rest of Drupal sits. But then we manage our configuration, the Drupal, sorry, Drush CEX and CIM config, for configuration YAML files in slash config slash sync. And uh, so, which is outside of the doc root, which means there is no risk of it getting served to any user who wants it. Also, the vendor is outside and composer JSON is outside. The only thing in web is Drupal. Drupal core, and then we will also put contrib and custom modules in here. All right, so it's installing 40 modules as you can imagine. It's going to take some time. Now, at this point, we can start Git managing it. But, so, what I mean is, if I, I can basically say git init in the current, uh, remember I'm doing git init in, in bar directory, not in bar slash web. If I say git init, it, and then say git status. So it says that you have these files that are untracked. If you notice, there are more directories than that. So it, it, so it did not complain about the vendor directory. You see, there is no mention of vendor directory. 
it the so it also so the reason why it didn't complain about the vendor directory is because there is a git ignore file which says you are supposed to ignore the vendor directory. There. So this line says don't bother git managing the vendor directory. Okay. So let's finish installing this site name and d8 bar site email address Okay. All right, so this is the directory. Now let's now that we have get in it. So if I say git add the current directory, everything in the current directory, everything except what is git ignored, right? So if I say git add dot, git status shows that this is what it's going to, this is all. This is all it's going to commit to git. Can you imagine if you if you look at the size of this du minus sh dot, it's 144 megabytes. And yet all that goes into git is this. That's it, nothing else. And if you look at the size, it won't be much. It will be very, very small, very small, really. Um, okay, so let's see if this works for us. So if I say git commit, initial commit, save and quit. Okay. Now, if I wanted to duplicate this project somewhere else, Imagine that I go for, oh, let me go back into bar. Let me open a second window. So just, although I'm on the same machine, but imagine that I'm not. Let's say I'm on a different machine, some other environment. So this was, this was Jitesh uh, doing this. And let's say this is Joey, Joey machine. And so he says, okay, git clone from the, some remote place. In this case, the remote place is right here, bar. And get clone bar into yet another lump. Okay, this is just <laughs> just making up names here. Okay, wait, what? Oh, sorry, not dot dot. But just get clone bar into lump. Done. If I go to lump, it has similar structure, but you will notice there is no vendor directory, and inside web there is no core. Drupal core is missing. <laughs> So, how do you get all those things that it needs? The answer is very simple, actually. Everything you need is in composer.json. That's it. Because composer.json is the blueprint of how to get everything you need. So we say composer install. That's it. Composer downloads everything. Boom. You got... At this point, if you see du minus sh, it's 142 megabytes, just like it was before. Let me let me do this again. Rm minus rf lump. Git clone bar into lump. Okay. Du minus sh of lump, you will see, is only 884 kilobytes. You go into lump, and this one composer install. Now if you do du minus sh, it's 142 megabytes. So it, it gained 141 megabytes just by doing composer install because it downloaded everything it needed. Now, I want to create a duplicate of that site here. So first let me just create a Drupal site. So I create a new database. Well, we'll do that in a second. First, sudo vi etc posts. I want to create a new host. Lum. And sudo vi etc nginx sites enable demo. And I will create a duplicate of this bar into lum. That's the only difference, right? My host name goes from server name goes to lum.demo.t8, and then the path goes to home jitesh demo lum web, right? That's the doc root. 
save and quit reload okay at this point if I go to this site just go to this new host name go through installation sure same um, wait hold on did it already create the file directory I didn't want it to create the file directory hold on so let's go to uh, web sites default remember I ch mod remove the others write permission on files and settings change group data for files and settings change make the group sticky on files okay. so now uh, it's not able to create config sync it's fine if I can oh it won't let me go any further than that so let's just create it kdir.flash config sync so let me proceed now. Database name is let's create the database. MySQL create database demo d8 sorry demo dash d8 num. Okay. Paste username to page password I don't remember. Copy that password. Here in the suite. So let's see if we can make this LUM a copy of bar. So what I'm trying to show you is the workflow where two people are working um, and they're making changes to the site and they want to share their changes, their modifications. And back and forth. Okay, so you're going to version control not only custom code, but you're also going to version control uh, the configuration. So let's see uh, if that works or not. Now I'm going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to export the con the configuration in this directory uh, in this site. And then I'm going to import it into this site. And you'll see how simple that is. There is one, one thing that you have to um, understand that they want the two sites to be clones of each other. So, which means they want you to copy the databases between them. We won't even bother to copy the database, and yet we will be able to. Um, make uh, import configuration from each other. I'll show you how. Let's just fin allow, this, allow this to finish. Alright, so let's give site name D8. this point we have everything we need okay so let us what I mean if I export this site d8 bar and import it here the name will change right at least in the names will change probably more than that so I go back to my original site I say cd2 web and say brush configuration export you will notice that when it can exports, it is no longer con exporting to sites default files, blah blah blah. It's exporting to config sync, dot dot slash config sync, which is perfect. Now, if I say git status, it says, oh, you have a directory called config which is not managed correctly. So, 
I said, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, let's let's manage with, with git git add dot dot slash config, which of course has sync directory and it has all these subdirectories sub files. Sorry. I say yeah, yeah, add them all. Uh, at this point, git status shows that you've added so many files. Okay. So I say yeah, sure. Let's uh, git commit added. Save and quit. Now back here, if I do git status, it's up to date, everything is fine. But I can say git remote minus v, and my remote is the bar directory, remember? So I can say git pull, and suddenly I gained the config directory. Remember I said, this is my, I gained the entire configuration. At this point, I can say, brush cim configuration import and it will look for the config directory that is indicated by sync which is config sync and import it okay so here it's saying you're about to import delete all these things and create them back and everything you're basically importing someone else's configuration into your directory so there are there are there's one bug in here. We'll fix that. We'll work around that bug, but let's try it. Say so yes. So here's the error. It says site UUID in source storage does not match the target storage. So this is the problem. Um, and let me explain what the problem is. This is a, a genuine problem because we did not create lum directory lum site from bar. We do not copy the database. If we copy the database, this error will go away. But rather than copying the database, there is a simpler way. Well, not simpler, but shorter way. The problem, the, the issue is that config sync has one file, file called system.site.yaml. And that has this UUID, okay? This UUID is different between the bar site and the lump site. So the, this is the uh, a UUID of the site itself. So what we will do is we will tell lump that your U site UUID is same as what this guy had. In order to tell that, what we have to do is brush configuration set system dot site, which is the base name of the YAML file and UUID, which is the name of the setting, and the new value of the UUID. What we are saying is, we are telling this clone site that ignore, discard your own UUID and take this UUID for your, as your own. Okay, rush configuration C set, configuration set. In the systems.site category, this setting, and this is the new value. You want to overwrite? Yes. Now, when I do configuration import, it will not complain about that. It might complain about something else. We'll see. Okay. So, what's the issue? It says import failed due to following reasons, which is shortcut link. Yeah. So, this is a known problem. This always shows up. And there is a simple solution to that. Go to shortcuts and then remove these shortcuts. You go to edit shortcuts. There's a bug in somewhere in some module and I don't know what that is. What. So let's just delete these shortcuts. Both of these shortcuts. We anyway don't use shortcuts, so I don't even know why we keep it. But we deleted those two shortcuts. And now I do press CIM again. Yes. And look at that importing the entire config site configuration from bar to lump and i'll show you why this is remarkable done so now if i go to lump and say back to site it is not lump it's bar the site name changed because it imported the other guys 
right? It imported the other um, other one's um, site name. So now let's make some some basic change. Let's say if I add, for example, another module. So this is the part of the um, workflow that I wanted to show you. So I say I go back to bar and I say brush download uh, admin toolbar. So you're basically adding a new a new uh, module. So look, brush is now warning you. This code base is assembled with composer instead of brush. Use composer update and composer require instead of brush uh, download. Okay, don't use just download. Use composer require. So this is how if you wanted to add admin toolbar you say composer require. Now before I start make sure git status is clean. Yes. So composer require the category the publisher is Drupal slash admin underscore toolbar. So once you do that Hmm. Admin has to do any version of minimum stability stable. What? Wait. Why is this minimum stability stable? I didn't mean to. So let me see. Composer. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm in the wrong directory. This is not where. There is no. There is no composer.json file here. Oh, there is. Sorry. This shouldn't have been. I think it got created by mistake. Yeah. Let me. If I do git status. Yeah. Let me delete composer.json. I should go one level up here. This is the level where you should run all your composer commands. So composer require Drupal is the publisher of the repository or whatever the category. Wait, require is require and uh, admin requires the project. Okay, now it found it did the right thing. So, watch what happens once I do git status after this. Okay, if I now do git status. Composer.json and Composer.lock have been modified. Actually, the module did get downloaded to modules, sorry, web modules slash contrib admin toolbars, right? But that is not, that doesn't show up in git status because the module contrib is git ignored. So therefore it only, but the, but the change itself is noted in Composer.json. If you do git diff, composer.json there it is admin toolbar got added right and then composer.lock is uh, basically um, is a is a file that that has that will have more changes but these are generated by system we don't edit them so we composer.lock has all the details which we don't care about but we do have to commit that also so git commit minus a as an all and all tracked files recommit them so there it is these two so I will say added um, module admin toolbar okay. save and quit now we can go to our other site and just say git pull and as you can see, when we did git pull, it pulled new versions of composer.json, but it did not pull admin toolbar, the module itself. To get that, you have to come back to the base where composer.json lives and run composer update. Or composer install. Install will also do the same thing. I think install is probably, I don't know, I'm not sure which one is better. So at this point, it's downloading admin toolbar.
So this way, um, making duplicate copies of websites in different environments it becomes very easy. So now if you see, uh, git status is up to date, no change, but in web modules contrib, you have admin toolbar. But strangely enough, admin toolbar, although it's been added and downloaded, but it has not been installed, it has not been enabled. So we could go back here and say trash en admin toolbar. There's one problem. We are running trash from somewhere, a wrong directory. We are running trash from a directory that is not Drupal root. Drupal root is in web. Now I don't want to keep CDing back and forth between web and this directory. So I will use a trick. I say drush use home. So basically give the path demo bar this web. So this is the root. And if I and then in there I will say uh, use the default site. So you're saying I don't keep I don't want to CD to the dark root of Drupal. I just want Trust to know where the dark root of Drupal is and which site within that I want to use. That's it. So you, you're just telling Trust to use that. Same thing we can do here. Same. It will be the same thing, but here we say Trust use demo lum on default. This way, when you do Trust status, it knows which place you're talking about. Wait, it didn't work very well here. Hold on. How come it didn't do a good job over here? Hmm. Hmm. It's not working very well here, but it works nicely here. Not sure why. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll work that out in a second. But let's enable. Now if I enable that, uh, just like, uh, yeah, I'll trash en admin toolbar. So, at this point, if you do git status, no change has occurred. But of course we enabled this, so we want to record that in git. How do we record that? We say trash configuration export. And, when we enabled a new module, it made changes to only one configuration called core.extension, which records the fact that you have enabled modules or not enabled them. So if I say yes, export it, and git status now says that config sync core.extension.yaml has been modified. If I do a git diff, you will notice that it added a new line for admin toolbar. So this is very important. It's basically saying that I am enabling a new module called admin toolbar with a weight of zero. This is the weight. So if I say git commit minus a, I can say enabled module admin toolbar. Save and quit. Back here, git pull. And then now, if I see, my config sync has changed, but I need to import it. So, brush. I don't think this will work. Yeah, see, it doesn't work because it wants me to be in that directory. So, brush use uh, home Sitesh demo. Dump. Oh, web. That's what. That was my mistake. I did not specify web in the default. And now, brush status will show the correct, yes. And then brush configuration import will actually import something. I say, okay, yes, go ahead and import that. As soon as I import it, in the new site, the admin menu should start behaving. Oh, wait, well, why is it looking like this? Oh, because I'm in the wrong, uh, shortcuts place, okay, manage. You see this admin menu toolbar got enabled because now the menus are flying out. Okay. So, what if now, let's say, remember this was Joey's, Joey's site. 
and Joey's copy of my site, right? Now let's say Joey says, oh, you know what, I, I'm tired of following whatever Jitesh is doing, I, I want to do something of my own. So he says, ah, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to download Path Auto. Okay. So he says, rush, not rush, sorry. Composer require, um, what is it called? Uh, Drupal Path Auto. So he, he's adding this. Is adding a new module. So now, th now this is a configuration flowing in the reverse direction. The other site has made some changes, and I'm going to bring those changes in. So as you can see, Path Auto downloaded Token C tools also along with Path Auto because it it this is why Composer is nice. It, it downloads the. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, dependencies as well. So I say, okay, good. Now let's enable it. So rush minus y en path auto. So now that we have enabled path auto, I uh, we should. Now this is the workflow. Remember, you export the configuration to CEX. And as you can see, it's creating a whole bunch of uh, configurations. These are most of them are a create new creations, all of them, except this one, which is core.extension, which records the fact that new module has been enabled. That is an update. So you say yes. And then I say git add config sync. Just add the whole directory, everything in it. And take git commit. And now I can say added you edit and enable of course both uh, path auto so now let me show you before I commit that let me show you in in this lum there is a path auto and it is enabled correct but in bar there is no path auto there's path but no path auto right so, as soon as I commit this, the edit module path auto commit, I go back to Jitesh's working area and I say, now, I, now Jitesh wants to pull from Joey, but if you see Jitesh has no remotes, he can add Joey as his remote. So, git remote add um, dot dot slash lump. Uh, remote add, oh, you, you give it a name first, remote add, let's say, yeah, let's call it lump, right, the rem name of the remote is lump, or you could call it origin, doesn't matter, add origin lump, so you're saying that there is a git repository in dot dot slash lump, add that under the symbolic name origin, so I do that, and now I can say git pull origin see my last commit which is added module path auto is now present in my original file directory so I, now I say brush imp, import the configuration my config sync has been updated so it says okay yeah you're going to import it oh wait sorry let me say no before I do brush import I have to do brush I'm sorry composer install that's important because composer install will download the appropriate files. Wait, did it? Let me just, let me make sure that it did. Web modules control. No, it didn't. I think I need to do composer update maybe. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I know why. Why this didn't work? Because if you see git status, composer JSON was never committed. That's the reason why it's not going to work. I need to add those. So git commit minus a, and I'll say added modules. 
closure. So that was the reason why it didn't uh, composer install didn't do the job. So now if I say git pull again and compose update. This time it shouldn't notice the fact that it needs to bring in new new dependencies. Alright, so now that composer has been brought in, uh, so if you see web module skin web, it has path auto c tools token everything. Okay, now I can say drush import the configuration, <coughs> and this time once I once this finishes, I can go to this extend and I will see that path auto is in, is downloaded as well as installed. So if I go to extend and look for path auto look path auto is there so this is one thing you could do better you could actually add new uh, so you could go to content types article manage fields and you could add another uh, another field right uh, you could change something here so let's say we go to structure content types and add an image to basic page. So I just say add field, add an existing field which is the image field and that's it, add it to basic page. That's, so now it has the image field. I mean I don't want to do anything more with it but let's just, add, I, let's just say I added that in this lump site. right? So I could now go back so at this point if I go to bar site and say structure content types and basic page manage fields there is no image field so if I come to the site I say rush export your configuration yeah and git commit minus sorry git add first because it's it created new files so git add config Git commit added field Im field image to basic page. Save and quit. Come back here. Git pull. Let's set up string origin master map. So this way it will have, I won't have to. Now I can just take it go. Okay. So that happened. It, it got the new changes. Now I just said rush cim import it. Say yes. And then as soon as I did that, I refresh it, I got my new field. Isn't that easy? <laughs> okay. So and, and like this, you can maintain two. I mean, one could be dev, the other could be production. One could they could be work, personal work sites of different developers. Whatever. Point is, transferring configuration is so easy now, and maintaining code is easy, and your Git repository is slim because everything is downloaded through Composer. And uh, so this this used to be very very complicated in Drupal seven with features and it. Most of the time, it, it didn't even work very well. Uh, it ha it is much simpler and much more reliable in Drupal 8. So that's the workflow that. Uh, by the way, I did not. Uh, there's another part of the workflow which is creating branches in Git, but that is more related to Git than to Drupal. But generally, you should create branches and send pull requests to each other. But uh, we'll do that in another session. At this point, I should stop. So let me. Job and uh, tomorrow or whenever next session we will basically uh, go further from here. Okay, so let me. See.